What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. So in this video, I want to talk about Dwayne Wade, Gabrielle Union, and their quote-unquote daughter. And of course, we already know that Gabrielle Union and Dwayne, and Dwayne Wade do have a you know, daughter, a biologically female daughter. And I use the quote-unquote to refer to... Um, Dwayne Wade's son and Gabrielle Union's stepson, who identifies as female. And I know that may offend some people, but I think it's necessary in this case, at this moment, right here. But I want to kind of just discuss a little bit about this situation and just give my two cents on the situation, you know, see what things We'll see what other people have to say. So I want to begin with this right here. All right. All gender is drag. All right. And when I say that, what I mean by that is we all are imitating someone else's idea of femininity or masculinity. And as well, we're kind of influenced by other people's ideas of what is feminine and what is masculine, you know. <clears throat> we didn't come up with these ideas of, you know, femininity and masculinity. Um, what, you know, we may have put our own spin on them, but we didn't create them, right? So, in a sense, all gender is drag. In a sense, all people are performing drag, in a sense. But with that being said, let's get into this. So there is a difference between gender and sex. And I have spoken on this before in a previous video about that whole um, Malik Yoba situation that popped off. And I'll go into it again kind of quick. So obviously there's a difference between, well, maybe not obviously, but there is a difference between gender and sex. Sex is you know, biologically based and gender is, you know, on a sociocultural level and it's based on, you know, society and culture, right? Essentially, gender would be kind of like the role that you play, per se, like, you know, gender roles, right? You, you ever heard of the phrase gender roles, right? And then the sex is kind of like what you are classified as based on your sexual reproductive function. Like, you know, women um, have ovaries, uterus, birth children, you know, female. Uh, men, penises, testicles, sperm, provide the seed, male, right? <clears throat> so, you know, with uh, Dwayne Wade's son, as well as other people who are kind of like in the same situation or similar situation as him, you know, <clears throat> he is identifying with a female gender role, right? But just because you identify as within a female gender role doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean that you are female, right? Of course, common sense, right? Of course. But I'm just wanting to put that out there. <clears throat> So is is Dwayne Wade being a supportive father? You know, is he just being a supportive father, just trying to help out his son and you know help his son navigate through the world, right? Um, I know in an interview, um, Dwayne said something to the effect of, you know, he kind of was picking up that his son wasn't on like the boy vibe, as he put it, right? He perhaps his son um, Zion, who now goes by, I think Zaya, um, wasn't really, I guess, gravitating toward things that you know boys his age typically gravitate toward. You know, perhaps. Um, I'm pretty sure they may they may there may be more to the story than that, but that's just what I um, picked up and doing a little bit of scanning about this situation. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, I kind of think that it may be a little bit too much too soon, 
you know? I don't knock Dwayne Wade for being a supportive father, but I do kind of think that this is a bit, a bit mm, too much too soon, you know? I think probably should wait till they get a little older. Again, some folks got some issues with that, too. <laughs> like, oh, well, you know, what if his, his son was like, you know, I guess straight, heterosexual, you wouldn't be trying to veer him off from that. And like, well, of course not, because that's considered within societal norms. So typically people don't veer people off from societal norms. It typically, you know, <clears throat> um, since, you know, identifying as a female, as a male and homosexuality aren't considered societal norms, you know, it's the situation is different with that. Um, <clears throat> and some people are accusing Dwayne of living vicariously through his son. You know, living out his truth through his son. All right. He's like, you know, daddy wasn't brave enough to do it. Daddy ain't. He wasn't brave enough to live his truth. But you're going to live your truth. I'm going to help you live your truth, son. Perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, you know, <clears throat> these folks like that. You know, yeah, some people have said some things about Dwayne Wade in rumors floating around. But I don't know anything to be you know, substantiated, you know, proven the receipts. God damn it. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> but perhaps. And if that is the case, he probably shouldn't be doing that, you know. Um, but to an extent, parents do kind of live out, live vicariously through their children, especially if their children tend to be like really successful. You know, right? <laughs> that tends to happen. You know, like there are some um, you know, men who have sons who play in the NBA, and I'm pretty sure that their fathers are living through them in some sort of sense, because perhaps they wanted to play in the NBA, but couldn't because of one reason or another. So, you know, perhaps they're living out their dreams through their son. Perhaps, right? <clears throat> no. Again, not the best thing to do, but it happens. Okay? It's just a part of life, you know? <clears throat> Especially considering that your children are an extension of you, especially when your children are the same gender and sex as you, it's even more so an extension of you, right? But, you know, another story for another day. Um, but yeah, um, Dwayne Wade, he referred to his son as she and, you know, one of his girls, quote unquote, you know, and that got people like, what? You know, and then they had posted a picture of them on some social media platform. I don't know which one. I forgot. Um, they posted a picture of, um, it was Dwayne Wade, Gabrielle Union, um, their um, infant daughter, and their son, Zion, who goes by Zaya now. And he was, like, in a crop top with... Um, like long fingernails, like um, kind of like false fingernails that are really long. And yeah, and some people kind of like, well, a lot of people are like the side eye with that. It's like, yeah, <clears throat> it's just, and then some people are saying, you know, well, does this really have to play out in social media and like in the public, which, yeah, that's an argument that can be made too. But then some people counter that argument with like, oh, well, this will help other people, right? Which perhaps it will, you know. <clears throat> but I do think there is a such thing as, you know, oversharing when it comes to social media and just in general, you know, just sharing a bit too much, you know, and letting people into your life a bit too much, you know. Like, for instance, Gabrielle Union, I think she was on Sway in the Morning. This happened a while ago. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she says something to the effect of basically, in so many words, um, she eats Dwayne Wade's booty like groceries. Now, that was something that should have probably just stayed between Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade. 
Now, the whole world ain't have to know that you was eating out <clears throat> them chocolate cheeks like groceries, Gabrielle Union, all right? They ain't have to know that. You know, the whole world ain't have to know that you like the taste of some chocolate booty cheeks all up in your face, Gabrielle Union. They ain't really have to know that, all right? <clears throat> But this is not uncommon. Celebrities do kind of do this, and sometimes it can help for folks on Main Street, and sometimes it, it's just like, mm, that's just a bit too much, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> so, yeah, I kind of think that in this situation, I think that his son, I, I think this may be a bit, a bit too young for all this, you know? And as well, they took... I think their son wound up attending like a gay pride parade, which I think may be a bit much as well. You know, um, I never been, but I've heard what goes on at those parades sometimes, you know, from hearsay and just on the internet. I'm just, just I'm like, I don't think that's a place for kids. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and as well, people are saying, does this have to be broadcast on social media? And it doesn't have to, but that's what they're doing. For one reason or another, maybe they're doing it for like clout and publicity and, you know, trying to get in good with the LGBTQIA community, perhaps. I don't know. All right. <clears throat> and then something's that, something that's going around is, um, you know, blaming it on Gabrielle Union. And that is sort of like what happens when it comes to parenting, especially in the black community. I'm not saying that it probably doesn't happen in other communities. It probably does, but especially when, it in, when it's in the black community where it's like, if there is like something wrong with the kids or an issue with the kids or something, blame it on the mom. Meanwhile, the dad is like right there. <laughs> and it's like, where's his blame at? And not to say that folks ain't coming at Dwayne Wade because they are, but they seem like they're coming at Gabrielle Union as well, a bit strong. And we know that, you know, some black men love to come at black women a bit strong. We've just seen that play out recently in the media, right? <clears throat> and it's like, well, you know, again, as I mentioned before, Gabrielle Union is, is a stepmom. She's not his biological mom, you know. As well, Dwayne Wade is his biological father. And as well, this is something that Dwayne Wade should be, you know, kind of like taking the wheel, you know, the steering wheel on her you know, taking the lead on, right? And as well, like, Gabrielle Union a while ago, um, she tried to teach her stepsons, or perhaps she still is, teaching her stepsons about, you know, quote-unquote, the beauty of brown skin and dark skin black women, right? And I didn't really hear much of an, much support about that, you know? I didn't really see that being pushed by the black community, especially black men. In fact, there was probably actually some pushback, I believe, from that. It was basically like, let her sons like what they like, you know? And then it was like, you know, everyone doesn't have to like brown skin and dark skin black women, you know? You looking bitter, you looking jealous, all right? Are you angry? What are you angry about, Gabrielle? All right. <clears throat> oh, Gabrielle, you're beautiful. You know, and that's another thing they'll do too. They'll be like, you're beautiful. That's another another tactic that they'll throw in. And not to say that it's not true, but sometimes it's just thrown in there to, you know, low key to shut her up, right? Oh, you just want a compliment. <laughs> and it's like, it's more than that. Kind of <laughs> you know, <clears throat> but again, um, that situation with Gabrielle Union and her stepsons, and that was pretty much either swept under the rug, and just pretend like we just didn't hear about that, or either people spoke out against it. Not so much support pushing that, yeah, we gotta get our black sons and our, you know, our brothers and that to show more love to our brown skin and dark skin sisters, right? You didn't really see that being pushed, all right? <clears throat> So, I just wanted to throw that in there right quick, too. You know, so folks 
it's just low key maybe either shaming Gabrielle Union for that or just ignoring it altogether, right? Worrying about, you know, quote unquote, you know, the black woman's image, especially when it comes to black, young black men, right? Low key, she getting shamed for it or it's just being ignored, right? But nevertheless, this whole situation, low key, is going back to, you know, worrying about the black man's image, to an extent at least, right? Many black men don't think that is a good look for the black male collective. And I'm not here to argue that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I do think that the black male collective often picks and chooses what's a good look and what's not a good look in the sense of like, well, you know, absentee fathers aren't a good look, but I don't really see that being pushed as like, hey, we got to, you know, come together and be the best fathers that we can be. I don't really see in that. I don't, I don't see that being pushed. Or like the slave book mentality, where it's like a kid over here, a kid over there, a kid over everywhere. Future. Right? <clears throat> I don't see that. I don't see Future really being shamed all that much for having kids here, there, and everywhere. Right now. <clears throat> I don't really see that. Right? I mean, look how folks came at, you know, Terry Crews in that situation, right? With him getting, you know, groped, right? <laughs> groped and stroked <laughs> by some white man in the casting room. He was like, you know, Terry, you, you want this part? You got to do a couple of strange things for a piece of change, Terry Crews. <laughs> and folks shamed Terry Crews for that. Oddly enough, Gabrielle Union was supporting him, but... That's another story. Um, I already spoke about that in the previous video, actually. Um, but yeah, pretty much, okay, you know, black men are concerned about black men's image, you know, the public image, of course, definitely. That's not, you know, something that's a bad thing. But sometimes I think that, you know, pretty much it's just, you just maintaining the Mandingo image. <laughs> and that's not necessarily like the, a thing that is, the worst thing ever but i think ultimately that's what it traces back to you know again forget like you know the absentee father um the slave book mentality the thug image right because some of these you know folks come through and be like black women only want the thugs and you know we go you know glorify the culture and that yeah but i don't really see that I do hear that argument on occasion, but I don't really see that being pushed like that. Like, oh, we got to stop the thug image, right? Because it, it, it I guess it helps with, you know, quote unquote, the Mandingo image, right? Because, <clears throat> you know, black men, you know, they want to make sure that every, every woman out there knows that she can get on the Mandingo diet. <laughs> you know, we don't want the non-black women to go on no, 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 no nigga diets now. Mm -mm. They gotta go on the Mandingo diet. They gotta make sure they coming through. You know, they gotta let the big black plumber come through and lay some big black pipe all up in their spot. Let the big black plumber flood you out, baby. Right? It's pretty much tracing back to that. You know, just want to be, you know, very much, you know, in, you know, adult novelty toy, um, a strap on, a dildo, with perhaps a personality chip, <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> but that's another story or another day. All right. But yeah, so black men can worry about their image, right? Fair. It's fair. Um, but black women often, well, black men often shame black women, especially darker skinned black women, for worrying about their image. Especially when black men are out there perpetuating negative images of black women, especially darker skinned black women. Then it's like, oh, well, that shouldn't really matter. Oh, you should get your validation from within. Oh, you should validate yourself. You shouldn't depend on the media. You shouldn't depend on black men. You shouldn't depend on the black community, right? 
Then when these women decide to, you know, quote unquote, die this from the black community, then <laughs> when they really do just stop depending on the goddamn black community for so much, then you a bad wench. Oh, you just want a white daddy. Oh, you want to just be a bad wench and bend over and bust it open for white daddy. Or either they'll come through with the fanfare and be like, oh, no, you a beautiful black queen, my sister. You need to be with a strong black king, sister. Stop that swirling. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> very much like mind game-ish, you know. <laughs> like some weird mind game or mental game going on there, All right? Or it's kind of like, oh, you know, you don't want the person, but you don't want no one else to have the person. You know, kind of like, you know, if you have an item in your house that you never really paid attention to, but then someone's like, oh, can I have this? And they're like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you know? <laughs> like, uh uh. <laughs> um, but I hope that there is no, you know, back to the Dwayne Wade situation with his son. I hope that there is no gender slash slash sexual reassignment surgery that's going to be happening anytime soon. Um, because, I, again, I don't think they would go that far. I hope not. Um, as well, I think even if that was a, if they would, I hope that a doctor would say, like, no, your son is too young for this, you know. <clears throat> And as well, I think you're supposed to even go through some like counseling before they even let you do it. It, I've heard that. I'm not sure, but that's a possibility that could be coming sometime in the future. You know, <clears throat> and you know, it does sort of rip. It's sort of like reminiscent of like um, Cher and her daughter now, who is her son. Um, you know, the singer Cher. You know, of course. <clears throat> and her daughter, I believe her daughter was named Chastity. Uh, Chastity transitioned to become Chaz. So um, her, starter, her daughter transitioned to um, the male um, identity or whatever. <clears throat> and it sort of reminds me of that, right? And, you know, Cher was not very supportive of her daughter being gay at first. I think she, like, kicked her out of the house. And, was, and you know, um, her Cher's um, gay following, from what I heard, actually didn't abandon her and didn't, um, you know, withdraw support from her from doing that. But, you know, Cher had came around and then she um, came around to accept her gay daughter, who ended up becoming her um, gay son, or, I don't know, her son. I don't know um, how that goes there. But yeah, <clears throat> just wanted to put that out there as something to compare and contrast with, right? Um, something else I want to talk about that's not related um, to this situation right quick is um, the situation with uh, Amanda Seals versus Jeannie Mai on The Real and the situation with Jesse Smollett, right? You know, Amanda and Jeannie were arguing about whether Jesse should be charged if he was lying. And, you know, Amanda was like, no, basically. And then Jeannie was like, yes, you know. <laughs> and hmm, my personal take on that, <clears throat> and as well, just FYI, you know, this is just my personal opinion on the um, Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union and their um, female identified son situation. This is just my opinion. As well, this is my opinion about this situation here with Jesse Smollett and the girls on the real. Um, considering that Jesse is in the public eye, I probably, I probably think they do want to quote unquote set an example and use him as an example. I do think that if you can't do the crime, well, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. You know, but Amanda Seals, you know, she did bring up some interesting points, you know. Um, and <clears throat> those are to be um, analyzed and thought about. Um, but considering that this is such a public thing, you know, spectacle and all this and that and the third, and I think Jesse is trying to sue them too, like, 
I don't know if it was staged 100%. That pretty much seems to be word on the street, though, that it was staged, right? Can, and I think Jesse may be countersuing or either suing and the other place is countersuing. I don't know. And then they're saying that this is a political thing because Chicago politics are ruthless. I'm not familiar with Chicago politics. Obviously, I don't live in Chicago. Um, <clears throat> nevertheless, that's what I heard. <laughs> I think ultimately, with Jesse Smollett and his situation, as well as just any situation across the board that's um, reflective of this situation, I think that if it was found out that Jesse Smollett was just straight up lying and created this narrative and false accusations and things like that, I think he should be punished somehow some way i don't know exactly what the punishment would be but i do think there should be some sort of a punishment involved um but you know nevertheless um i did think that amanda seals was making somewhat of like false comparisons while she was arguing too and i don't think it was right that for her to call jesse smollett low-key noble <laughs> i don't think that was the best name to put out there you know I don't think this was noble. Then people are bringing up, oh, Amanda Seals, you lied on a black man. So, of course, you think this is just A-OK. -okay. <laughs> and then I heard that, well, that situation was taken out of context and was, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, some people aren't feeling Amanda on the show, thinking that she kills the vibe, perhaps. And then some people are saying she, you know, goes well when it comes to like serious topics like racism and things like that. I think that's true. Um, personally, I kind of think that, um, well, before I get into that, um, Jeannie Mai spoke about um, some Asian people being discriminated against because of like the coronavirus. I'm like, okay, you know, Jeannie Mai is Asian. She's gonna speak up about Asian issues, but, then again, Jeannie Mai does have a history of all lives mattering situations that involve black people, especially black women. But again, something to notice when it comes to people and their issues that affect them, they don't tend to take that same stance. Not all lives. No, they're like, my situation matters, right? <clears throat> again, that's something to be aware of because. Some of y'all out there, especially some of you black women out there, think that G Mai is your sister. <laughs> because she dating Jeezy. Jeannie right? Mai, your sister. <laughs> she down for you. You know? Ain't no, no. Like Jeannie Mai ain't your friend. She just wants your man. Alright. She ain't down to ride for you. She just down to ride, if you know what I mean. <laughs> she down for that. And again, something else to throw out there right quick. Notice that this situation of Jeannie Mai and Young Jeezy, right? When they came out being public about their relationship, notice how there was so much fanfare about that. And the black spears, the black media spears, and, you know, the black social media, and other black, state, <laughs> black stuff. <clears throat> But when Megan Thee Stallion and G-Eazy, you know, quote unquote, came out, you know, you know, doing what they did, you, did, you notice that there wasn't nearly as much fanfare about that. Like, oh, that's what's up. Okay, what's up? <laughs> and, you know, from black men and black women, right? Black men and black women were coming at uh, Megan the Stallion. And while black men and black women were big up in Jeezy and um, Jeannie Mai. That's strange, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that? That's just a little bit strange there. Right? <clears throat> but black women do tend to participate low key in their own marginalization. One way or another, they do tend to participate in self sabotaging behavior. Right. They tend to just participate in black male fuckery and perpetuating it. You know. So things to think about. 
<clears throat> and um, something that I noticed, I think that uh, Lonnie Love and Amanda Stills are like, may quote unquote low key have like a code when it comes to each other, you know, because I did notice that, you know, Amanda was, you know, supporting Lonnie Love in situations when Lonnie Love was being attacked. She did kind of come through and support and, you know, try to um, either not throw Lonnie Love under the bus, which is good. You know, even if she didn't agree with it, at least just don't throw her on the bus about it or just, you know, support her and say, hey, you know, this situation would be a bit different if you were a man saying this about women. Right. <clears throat> and I think Melanie Love is low key kind of doing the same thing with Amanda Seals. Like, even though she may not agree with it, she's not going to just throw Amanda Seals under the bus. You know, and she even low key came through and defended Amanda Seals, you know, saying that she has a batch, uh, master's degree actually in African American studies and she was brought on for topics, especially for topics like this, right? These um, racial topics, right? <clears throat> Um, but one more thing before I go. Um, so I kind of view Amanda Seals as being like, quote unquote, <laughs> Tamar 2.0, <laughs> like a more refined version of Tamar. And as well, I think, you know, I kind of view Tamar as being like a slightly more refined version of Shanene for Martin. Think about it. Like, Think about how Tamar acts, and then think about how Shanae acts. It's kind of very similar, right? Again, something to think about. But thank you for watching. Feel free to comment. Feel free to let me know what you think about these situations here. Until the next video, my black people, my beautiful black people, I got to say adios and goodbye to you. All right. But seriously. Peace out. See you in the next video.